Hey everybody, this is Miss Ludwig. I am going to briefly review with you um, changing states of matter, and I would like to help you fill in the concept map that is on page 10 in your notes. All right, here we go. So anytime you do a concept map, you always want to find the central or main idea. For this concept map, it is states of matter right here in the middle. And then we're going to kind of just read it as a sentence. It does skip around a little bit, so just hang in there with me. All right, so. States of matter, we're going to go down, include our three states of matter, our solids, liquids, and gases. From there, we need to describe solids. So solids have particles that are tightly packed. They also have a definite shape and a definite volume. There are two different types of solids. We have crystalline sol solids whose patterns are very regular and distinct, and amorphous solids whose patterns are irregular. Things like butter, candle wax, you can kind of mold them and shape them into the solid shape that you want them to be. Um, liquids in the middle, liquids have no shape, no definite shape, but they do have a definite volume. That means I can measure how much of a liquid I have, but it's going to always take the shape of its container. Gases have no shape and no definite volume. So gases have particles that are very spread apart, they're full of energy, they're bouncing around all over the place, and they will take the shape of their container. If there is no container, their container is the room or the area that they're in. And they do have no definite volume because I can compre compress gases. I can change the volume of a gas by just pushing those particles closer together. Um, states of matter change by losing energy, losing thermal energy or losing heat. That includes freezing, things that get colder, and condensation. Condensation is when I have a vapor, um, water vapor or a gas, and it cools down to form a liquid. States of matter change by also adding thermal energy. So this is heating things up. That includes these things, it includes sublimation, so sublimation is when I take something from a solid and I skip the liquid phase. So something goes straight from a solid to a gas, like dry ice is it a good example. Another good example of sublimation would be um, those little cone looking um, air fresheners or the little bead air fresheners. They go from a solid, they never melt, but seemingly disappear over time. They are changing straight from a solid to a gas state. So that's called sublimation. Vaporization includes evaporation when we are just um, changing something from a liquid to gas only at the surface, and then also boiling. Boiling occurs, of course, at the boiling point. It's just the temperature at which a certain substance will boil. Um, we also can add heat and melt something. Melting occurs at the melting point. Again, just the temperature at which something will melt. All right, so now we're bouncing back over here. So states of matter include gases. Gases have particles that can spread apart. Their behavior depends on temperature and volume. Okay, a gas's behavior depends on temperature and volume. When we're talking about the changing the temperature of a gas, we in volume, we're talking about Charles's law. When we look at a graph that shows temperature versus volume for Charles's law, we're going to see that graph is directly proportional, which means that when the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. So when I heat up a gas, those gas particles are going to get crazy and they're gonna spread apart. So if I'm heating up a balloon, gas particles are kind of like this, and then when I add heat, they're going to expand. The balloon is going to get bigger. Those are directly proportional. We also have um, another law called Boyle's law that's relating volume and pressure. So volume and pressure, when they're related, that's called Boyle's law. When I graph Boyle's law, I'm going to see that the variables, pressure and volume, act in opposite ways. Sometimes we call them um, inversely proportional, meaning when one goes up, the other goes down. So if I increase the pressure, if I um, compress a gas, if I have a container and I start pushing down, that's increasing the pressure increasing the pressure and when I increase the pressure the volume the amount of space that those gas particles are taking up is getting smaller I'm just squeezing the particles together so that's Boyle's law and I think that's it 
So that is your quick review on the states of matter, our basic three types, our solids, liquids, and gases. We could describe the particles in each of them. Um, we talk about gases with Charles's law relating temperature and volume. When temperature goes up, volume goes up. When temperature goes down, volume also goes down. Um, and also when we're talking about gases, we have Boyle's law where we are relating the volume of a gas to the pressure. So if I increase pressure, the volume is going down. If I decrease pressure, the volume is going to go up. They act in opposite ways. Over here was a quick review of the solids, crystalline and amorphous solids. And then up here is when we change states of matter. When I add heat, these things over here happen. When I take away heat or I lose thermal energy, these things up here happen. Okay, thanks for tuning in.